Puff Daddy Combs. I, I don't know. I don't know why, but it's like Puff Daddy Paul's pause. It's like Puff Daddy comes up pause so often on this channel. But maybe he's just one of these people that's just like, you know, never ending material. Um, you know, I don't mean to discredit somebody. <laughs> yeah, right. But Puff Daddy is the type of person when you look at his. You see, I can't even I can't even say look at his career because what does he do? When you look at, I guess, his life from the 1990s to now, it's kind of like, what is his talent? And I've heard people say this before. You know, there, there are people, you know, I give, I, I give Puff Daddy credit because he was a visionary. He did lead a movement of Bad Boy Records. He did direct people he didn't he, he calls it producing he directed people he wasn't playing them keyboards and 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 pianos and the guitar and, and he wasn't putting the sampler in the no but he did direct people on what to do oh that sound good or turn this down or turn this up or bend over you know he directed people but you know he clearly had a great impact on hip-hop music now you could also say he had a negative one but i think i think his positive impact outweighs his negative one um, it's a fact. Without him, Biggie Smalls would have not been what he was. Biggie Smalls would have been Lord Finesse. He would have been on Lyricist Lounge and Sound Bombing and Tony Touch. That's a fact. You know, um, he, he was a visionary. You can't have a movement like Bad Boy was in 94, 95, 97, 02, whatever. You can't have a movement without someone at the head who's a visionary and having them people's money. But... There are those who don't give Puff Daddy any credit for anything. Those are delusional monkeys. And usually those are a bunch of big big head, big lip, Ninja Turtle, New York niggas. You know, these New York niggas who they wear, the, I, I did this rant before, they wear fitted hats 24-7. They on the toilet, they got a fitted hat on. They in the bed, fitted hat. They at the dinner table, they're at a funeral, and they still got this Yankee fitted hat. Something about these dusty New York niggas. Um, they really don't like Puffy. I, I, don't, I don't know. Were you working on his street team, but he didn't? He never paid you? Whatever. Um, but to not give him any credit, that's just nonsense. But that's how these monkeys are in the comment section. Hit the like button. Um, but Puffy did have an impact. He did lead a movement. Now, when you say what was his actual talent, was he a great rapper? No. Could he sing? Hell no. Could he dance? I hear a bunch of people saying no. Uh, could Puffy... I mean... Uh, he, he probably danced better than your grandma. Or your drunk uncle at a cookout. Well, didn't they have that one like... Uh, <laughs> good lord. Didn't they have that one scene in... Uh, uh, what was it? The Senorita video with Jennifer Lopez? or One of them videos where he like had like a dancing section... And then he had like the, the whole dancing performance on the VMAs in 02 with the little white kid. Well, who was that little white kid he was dancing with? What what did the industry do to that child? Who was the little white kid Puffy was dancing with on the 02 VMAs? Who was that? Was that Bieber? Was that Aaron Carter? Oh, uh, Aaron Carter. He's up out of here. Whatever. But um, I guess his dancing was all right. Uh, could he produce... No, but he, he put his name on the credits like he did. So I guess, I, I guess, what was Puff Daddy's real talent? I guess there's a valid point if you're saying what was his talent. But he was a great promoter. Maybe that's what his talent was. So I guess the question is, what was his musical talent? None, but he did have talent as far as promoting. If Puff Daddy has a product, you're going to know about it. Ciroc, if he has a product, if he has an event... If he has a movement, you're going to know about it. Bad Boy Records. Uh, you know, when they did the Big Mac marketing with Craig Mac and Biggie Smalls. You know, Ciroc. Uh, he, oh, Puffy's doing this new show called Making the Band. Uh, Puffy's uh, he, he's doing a marathon. The whole voter die. That worked. You know, if, if he has something, you're going to know about it. So I guess his talent is in promoting. And maybe his talent is in taking credit for things he could never do and didn't do. Whatever. But... This is a society that they go with the money. 
They, they go with the money. These people can know that you have no talent. They can know that you didn't do what you say you did. But if you have popularity, if you have that, that, that perce uh, perception, oh God, perception, if you have that, they will do business with you. Now, when Puff Daddy Combs is on fire in 97 and then 98, you know, he's on the Godzilla uh, soundtrack. He's on every late night show. He was performing on Rosie O'Donnell. Why, why did Rosie O'Donnell have a late night show? Whatever. He was everywhere. And in 98 is when Oliver Stone, the very controversial movie director, you know, he did JFK. I mean, his whole thing was always conspiracies. Good Lord. But uh, but Oliver Stone, his life is actually a movie. He, he has a fascinating life and some weird rainbow nonsense. But uh, if you know, you know. But um, Oliver Stone, who's known for his conspiracies and kind of his outlandish kind of out there perspective that he puts in his films. He's going to do a football movie. So. At this time in 98, Puffy's like the biggest thing. He's he's all over. He's he's crossed over into the pop world, what have you. And also at this time, another big uh, person on the, uh, you know, rising in entertainment is Jamie Foxx. You know, Jamie Foxx, you know, he had his run on In Living Color. He was doing his films. He had his role on Rock. And he had the Jamie Foxx show, which I believe the Jamie Foxx show, I believe at the time it aired on the WB and in that 96, 97, 98, 99, this is kind of a renaissance. And it's kind of a boom of black sitcoms. You know, at that time, you had the Parkers, Moesha, you know, Martin was finishing, Steve Harvey show, Jamie Foxx show, the Hughleys, um, the Parenthood. You had a lot of black TV shows. And Jamie Foxx is one of the bigger shows. And he was also... You know, he, he was seen as being a very funny comedian, a very good actor, a funny actor. And he was also, you know, Jamie Foxx, you know, he had albums, music albums in the 90s. They didn't go nowhere because no one wanted to hear him sing. But he, he I believe Jamie Foxx put out an R&B album in 94. I think it was called Peep This. Nobody did, though. And uh, hit the like button, share this video, subscribe to the channel. If you want to support the channel, if you have a video request, you can donate to the cash up in the description. Or hit the thanks button. But, um... Jamie Foxx was, was a rising star, and at this time, they're going to do a football movie, and Oliver Stone, it has to be conspiracy, so of course, it's football, so what's the dark side of football? It's, everything with Oliver Stone was, what's the dark side? So, you know, the movie is, you know, the old veteran who's just hanging on to get that last pension, or or not even pension, to get that last bonus, the, the incentives in his contract, and he'll, he'll take a steroid just to make it to the end of the season, and... The, the quarterback who's having head trauma, but he keeps playing even though he shouldn't. And, you know, the, the battle of the sexes of the, 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 the female, the daughter, and she's clashing with the old school men who are chauvinists and all that trash. He puts all this into a film. Now, I, I will admit, Any Given Sunday is a great film. Beautiful soundtrack. Oh, the, 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 the soundtrack that had the... Um, that record with Guru from Gangstar. Oh, my God. Man, Guru. This is off topic, but Guru is one of these people. He never gets talked about. Of all the rappers who are deceased and get praised, people never mention Guru from Gangstar. He was tremendous. The king of monotone. The father of Rock Marciano. Ah, oh. Guru from Gangstar, man. Legend, man. He, he, he's prolific. But that's another video for another day. That might be a wasted potential episode. Even though, even though I don't think he's wasted potential, actually. I, I might just have to do like a video just saluting the greatness of Guru from Gangstar. And I guess Gangstar and Premiere as a whole. But um, they do the film and obviously the film is going to be centered around Cameron Diaz character. Al Pacino, the great Al Pacino. We fight for every yard. We fight for every inch. <laughs> That's what Puffy said, too. But um, apparently uh, Puffy liked a certain amount of inches in Cassie, but that was too easy. That was too easy. Anyway, it was hard, too. But um, Al Pacino is going to revolve around him. But then also 
you know, it's a football movie. Football movies are always going to be about the quarterback in some form or some fashion. So the quarterback of the film, they need a star to play it. And their first choice was not Jamie Foxx. The first choice was actually Puff Daddy. They actually they actually uh, wrote a lot of the film in mind of Puffy will play this role because they saw Puff Daddy as, you know, Puffy had crossed over where, where the white people knew who he was. So white people saw Puffy and thought, oh my God, he's he's charismatic and uh, he's flamboyant and uh, he, he bends over for Clive Davis. And um, they thought Puffy would be perfect, but they didn't realize uh, Puffy is not charismatic. Puffy is not a great speaker like that. Puffy, you know, at the time, I don't, you know, I think Puff Daddy more like maybe in the last, I think making the band era to now, he's more like outspoken. Puffy was more laid back in the 90s. He wasn't really boisterous like that. He wasn't really a charismatic person like that. You can go back and watch his video interviews in the 90s. He's kind of like soft spoken and laid back. He wasn't really. Like, he didn't really have a, a, a character that exuded. He didn't really have, you know, magnetism in his words. He, he really didn't. But they thought he would be perfect for this role. And he had the role. The problem is, Puffy, um, he don't have personality. He's not an actor. He doesn't exude the character the way they would have needed. He doesn't put life into his words the way they would have needed. And then also the last part, and this was this was the death nail of Puff Daddy Combs. When they're, you know, this is a football movie. This, this makes me laugh. This is a football movie. Yes, they have stunt doubles. Yes, they might have real players to do the actual football scenes. But the actor, you have to be able to do something. So this kind of destroyed Puffy getting the role and keeping the role. They had Puffy there on the set. They're not not on. I don't. I don't think on the set. I think like in the um, like the uh, the they, you know, they're doing testing. You know, they want to see how you look in pads and the jersey. They want to see you. You know, in front of the green screen, what have you. And there was there was a part where they wanted Puffy. You know, Willie Beeman is the character, and he was he was a quarterback. So you have to throw the ball. So they had Puffy on the set, and they wanted him to throw the ball to see how he looked as a quarterback. And Puff Daddy could not throw a football. <laughs> he could not throw a ball. He couldn't throw a spiral. He he had no athletic ability, no athletic acumen. He could not throw a football. He couldn't throw the ball 30 yards. He couldn't throw the ball 20 yards. He couldn't throw the ball 5 yards. It's like, Jesus Christ, he been throwing his ass for Clive Davis in the office, but he can't throw his arm? So that caused him to lose the role, and they go to Jamie Foxx. And obviously, Jamie Foxx, better speaker, more charismatic. Obviously, it, it wasn't a comedy film, but, you know, he was funnier, more personality. It was a, you know, you had to have personality. He showed that. And Jamie Foxx, pretty much, he perfectly fit the Willie Beeman character. And another thing about Jamie Foxx was he played football in high school in Texas. He played, he was, I believe he was starting quarterback. And he wasn't the greatest quarterback because if you know Jamie Foxx stories, uh, he was one of them. He was, he was kind of like um, if, if, if you're a football head from the early 2000s, when Jamie Foxx played in high school, he was like Aaron Brooks, meaning uh, he was going to throw like 20 interceptions every season, but he's the best quarterback you have. He was that type of quarterback, but he could at least throw a ball uh, 10 yards, unlike Puff Daddy Combs. So... That's how Puffy lost that role. But I think he survived. I, I think he recovered and went on to steal more publishing and more white people's money. And with that said, I'm out, I'm about to hear like, share, comment, subscribe. And that is it.